So you're ready to give her... There you are in Picasso's studio. <laughs> so you're ready to give her hell? Oh, yeah, we'll start her up. Okay. This is the first stage of my paintings, right here. Order some canvas. And we cut it up. Where'd you get your canvas? From Accent on Art at the Assiniboine Gallery in Regina. It now works the best. Canvas is pretty fine, so it's ready to use as soon as you... Artist's tools. So what we do is we just cut it like this. Fairly simple procedure, you just lay it on the front here. Make sure it's sized right and start stapling. Once you staple it at one end, lay your canvas over and it grabs hold of the canvas and you pull it. You'll see how it tightens set it up. You always start in the middle, get the creases. From the middle, you work your way out to the edges. So it's looking good now. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty well. Pretty smooth. That's what you want. You can't have creases or anything, or that your paint tends to pool. It's just a matter of stretching. Do you do your own frames after? Wait. No, no, my dad does all my framing. The frames that dad built, it's made of solid oak. There are two pieces, one's a liner and one's the actual oak frame. And the finished product will go in there. I'll just leave it here for now. Okay. For a step to a painting, you have to have some kind of idea what it is you want to paint. And the best way to do that is to just get a little sketchbook paper. Uh, my idea today is to paint a barn, and the barn I want to paint is Emil Caro's old barn. Uh, it's been sitting there, and there's nobody living on the farm anymore, so the grass is growing, and that's what you want. It's, or that's the type of, of stuff I like to paint anyways, is old barns and that type of stuff. So I get just a basic idea. I did some sketching out there, paint the barn in the background and paint a few things, uh, maybe an old clothesline, uh, an old burning barrel or whatever in the foreground, just to give everything depth. And you add those. Uh, that's what you can do as a painter that you can't do as a photographer. When you photograph something, you get what's there. As a painter, you can add or remove or move whatever you want. And that's, of course, the joy of painting. So in today's, the painting that I want to start today, uh, I want that barn, and I'm going to make it part of the painting that I'm going to do today. When you're a painter, you need specialized equipment. You need an old piece of masonite and some cut right wax paper. Very, very important and hard to find. The wax paper 
you lay on your masonite and you yell at your wife, Mom, where's the tape? You can never be a painter unless you have specialized equipment. Masking tape, wax paper, and an old piece of masonite board. And you don't have to worry about being too fancy. Well, that's for what, to mix your colors on there? Yeah. Uh, acrylic paints are fast drying. And so what you want to do is something that you can throw out afterwards. All the paint tends to dry out really fast. So what you do, what I like to paint with is the primary colors. And your primary colors, white is not one of them, but you need lots of white. So you throw it on wax paper. You'll need some red, which is a primary color. Primary meaning that no other color mixed together will give you red. Red exists likewise with blue, red and blue. There's blue. And the third primary color is yellow. In other words, no matter what you mix together, you'll never get yellow. Yellow exists as yellow and that's it. So there is yellow. Those three primary colors are what you use most of. Any other combination, green, you make up with blue and yellow. Red and blue will give you violet or brown mixed with a little bit of yellow. I like yellow ochre and raw sienna. They're different types of brown, so or a more muted type of yellow, so we'll use that. And yellow ochre. Yuck! So you always pick a uh you like taking old uh, barns and older yeah, pictures? Yeah. yeah, I like old barns. I like uh, things that are dying. Here's a... I went out to uh, Emil Perro's old farm yesterday and I sketched the barn. Now the barn by itself probably wouldn't make much of a picture except that it'd be a barn. So what I decided to do is try and include a few things that are getting kind of shabby and are falling apart. And I introduced... Uh, human being into the picture just for interest's sake and maybe I'll call uh, this picture uh, a year after the sale or something like that where a man comes back to look at everything that's kind of falling apart. Uh, that interests me, uh, farms being abandoned, farms being sold and uh, there's nobody in this corner to live in them and that's a problem I think nowadays. And so we'll paint a picture of that, maybe a, a bit of a sad picture. That's the kind of yeah. pictures I like to paint. Like uh, you more or less paint the way you see it. That's, that's right. Yeah, I don't try and uh, and uh, paint something that's uh, correct. Uh, I don't like to paint things that you you could probably get a, an enlargement of a photograph and get it more accurate. All, everything would be exactly where it belongs. What I like to try is to project some kind of an idea, and that's, this is what this is going to be. Just an idea. First thing to do is to try and block things in. And that's what we'll do in this case. Water, very important with acrylic paints. You don't use oil, you don't use linseed oil. There's no need for turpentine, you need water. So what we start with is a little bit of blue. We've got a blue sky. Okay, now this is going to be kind of a somber scene. So I'm not going to paint the sky a nice bright blue, I'm going to darken it because the whole idea of this picture is kind of a sadness. So we'll use some white and blue and I'll add some red in there. Okay, I want my sky to look a little bit on a somber side. This is not a happy picture. 